starvation, diseased, forced labor, and brutal treatment. These were the harsh realities that Dr. Viktor von Frankl, an Austrian psychiatrist, faced during World War II. For over many years, he endured the horrors of various concentration camps. But amidst the darkness, Dr. Frankl found glimmers of hope and resilience among his fellow prisoners. In his powerful memoir, Man's Search for Meaning, he shares his first-hand accounts of life in the camps and the lessons he learned about the human spirit. Through his vivid storytelling, Dr. Frankl reveals how the prisoners managed to find compassion in humanity in the face of extreme adversity. He also delves into the importance of managing suffering and finding meaning in one's experiences, no matter how difficult they may be. As I read Dr. Frankl's words, I was struck by the unwavering perspective on the power of love and the human spirit. His memoir is a testament to the incredible resilience of humanity in the face of unimaginable destruction and suffering. And these are the lessons that I took away. Lesson one, from all this we may learn that there are two races of men in this world, but only these two, the race of the decent man and the race of the indecent man. Both are found everywhere. They penetrate into all groups of society. No group consists entirely of decent or indecent people. In the depths of the Nazi concentration camp, Dr. Frankl clung to a single hope, to be reunited with his beloved wife and family and continue his university teachings. But with each passing hour, it seemed that Liberation Day would never come. The swastika wearing guards took hope from the prisoners at any opportunity, like stomping on the fires during cold work days or giving them breadcrumbs to eat. As Dr. Frankel observed these actions of his fellow prisoners, he began to see the true nature of humanity in all its forms. Some turned to betrayal or violence, desperate to gain the edge in the struggle for survival. Others like himself hung out to their dignity and integrity. Dr. Frankel shares the stories of his fellow prisoners, men who had once held esteemed positions in their field, but now were reduced to scum in the eyes of the guards. Yet even in the darkest days, there were glimmers of hope. A small act of kindness, like sharing the last piece of bread or passing along much needed medical supplies could mean the difference between life or death. But it was Dr. Frankel's encounter with one guard that truly tested his beliefs. As he reached for a piece of bread, he realized that it had been handed to him by a man with a swastika on his shoulder, a death sentence to the enemy. Dr. Frankel was moved to tears. Everything that he knew about the guards, about the world, was tilted on its axis. I felt a sense of confusion and conflict, much like Dr. Frankel. How could it be possible that those who wore the emblem of hate and oppression were capable of acts of kindness? Yet I could not deny the truth of his words. In the face of unimaginable suffering, it was the human spirit that truly shone through. From this first-person perspective, I saw political ideologies and propaganda's biggest weakness. They can never fully capture humanity's desire for free thought and human altruism. Lesson two, in some ways, suffering ceases to be suffering at the moment it finds meaning. Dr. Frankel was a man who refused to give up even when he was stripped of his practice and thrown into a Nazi concentration camp. In the dark and harrowing place where death was a constant companion, he witnessed men fall like leaves in the wind, not because of their physical size, but because of their small faith. However, Dr. Frankel remained steadfast, determined to help others find a reason to live. One day, a prisoner attempted suicide, but Dr. Frankel intervened. The man was a brilliant scientist who had been so close to completing his book series. While conversating to Dr. Frankel, the scientist let him know he could be the only one who could write those books. Dr. Frankel, in that moment, let the man know that while life had taken everything away from him, he still needed to give life everything he had left. For Dr. Frankel, this was personal. His own manuscript had been taken away from him when he first entered the camps. A powerful reminder of everything he had lost. But he refused to quit on his dreams of teaching. As he often quoted Nietzsche, those who have a why to live can bear almost any how. Reflecting on Dr. Frankel's words, I thought about my own passion for creativity. What would happen if someone tried to take that away from me? The thought filled me with a sense of urgency and fierce determination to hold on to what's mine. I realized that this passion was more than just a hobby or a pastime. It was a part of who I was. And it's not just in one group, but in all of us. Lesson three. A thought transfixed me. For the first time in my life, I saw the truth as it is set into song by so many poets, proclaimed as a final wisdom by so many thinkers. The truth that love is the ultimate and highest goal to which man can aspire. Then I grasped the meaning of the greatest secret that human poetry and human thought and belief have to impart. The salvation of man is through love and in love. At the outset of the book, 
Dr. Frankel's manuscript being ripped away seemed to be the biggest concern, and I was fixated on his ambition to return to practicing medicine and teach at a university someday. However, as I pondered this further while writing this piece, I came to the starting realization, a man's ultimate purpose is not defined by his profession, but by his love for his family and community. Amid the harsh and unforgiving environment, Dr. Frankel's longing to be a doctor eventually gave way through to thoughts of his wife, whose beauty and character he envisioned so vividly that he could hear her voice. Then on page 96, I stumbled upon a sentence that shone as brightly as the sun's rays on Dr. Frankel's face. While some might view the book's message to be about meaning, I was struck by the immense power of love. In my opinion, being able to love something or someone wholeheartedly can propel anyone forward and enable us to overcome any challenge, no matter how dire the circumstances. So thank you so much for watching. These sort of book essays slash what I learned is what I hope to be doing more of. So if you enjoyed that, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment if you have read the book and what you learned from it. So I always love to have a discussion so you can hit me up via Twitter or in the comment section. But as always, I thank you so much for your time and your opinion. My name is Asuki Hongos. I'll catch you in the next one.